in to the hottest station on the planet. Resistance is futile. The revolution has begun. You're listening to Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo, here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio, the show that helps you build the business you need for the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. Your energy is so important. You can bring positive energy into your business and into your life, or you can bring negative energy into your business and into your life. And so uh, it's managing your energy as, as much as managing your time. Managing your energy is so important to make sure that you're going to create the business you need for the life that you want. And today's expert is a master at helping you become more aware of your energy. He is Scott Kepsel. He is an intuitive coach, guided mentor. He channels or gives voice to our collective greater awareness to bring expanded wisdom, understanding, and results in all areas of your business and life. Scott has used his intuitive connection to overcome growing up with alcoholic parents, to excel in the corporate world, and to run his own successful business. Scott teaches and guides business owners how to get out of their own way by managing their personal and business energies, following their inner guidance, and aligning with the personal and business purposes. Scott, welcome to Rebel Purdue Radio. Hey, Ralph. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Well, I think you are the perfect person that we should turn to as we consider this idea. Uh, there was a book that came out a few years ago called, um, uh, what is it? Uh, engagement, something to do with engagement. And I remember the subtitle more than the title of the book, and it's Managing Energy, Not Time is the Key to Personal Success. Uh, so I'm I'm really interested in what you do. But first of all, tell us a little bit more about um, who you are and how you got started doing this. Okay, I'd love to. Um, well, I, uh, I've been intuitive my whole life, meaning I've, I've maintained that kind of natural internal awareness and connection with what I feel and believe is is a greater part of me and you and, and of course, everyone else here. Um, and so I've always kind of had a conscious awareness of, of more happening than our minds have been taught or told or are necessarily aware of. And, and I've been able to live my life experience in that awareness and it certainly has served me in many, many ways throughout this lifetime. Um, as you mentioned, I grew up with alcoholic parents, and um, I was the caretaker, of course. And mm. My siblings scattered, and it was it was my role to stay and and do what I could in my limited awareness to try to you know keep them going. And and eventually, it killed my father. And uh, my mom got to the point where I physically carried her kicking and screaming into a rehab facility, and. Um, once she got in there and, and straightened out, then she realized what happened and, and did great the rest of her life. Mm. Um, and, but what's really significant in all of that is, um, it, it, it got me into the al program and that started to expose my mind level awareness to greater spiritual principles. And all of that just resonated for me. And I, like, I couldn't get enough of it. And it, it just began my lifelong journey of immersion into, uh, you know, the greater possibilities of, of who are we and what's really happening here. And so I've used that intuition and awareness. And, and, by, and by the way, I want to say, too, that um, from my perspective, that, that connection, that intuition and awareness is a very natural part of who every single one of us truly is. And in my case, I've just been aware of it and chose to focus and use it. Um, it, it's, you know, when the phone rings and you know who it is <laughs> before you look at your phone, it, it's that natural sense of awareness or someone comes into the room, you don't see them or hear them, but you feel them. Hmm. And, and we all have that. And it, it's again, from my perspective, a very natural part of who we are. 
And my path in this life has, has just been to focus on it and, and use it. And, and, and I want to say benefit from it um, because there's so much power and value in tapping into that greater part of us, like, again, from my perspective. So, mm. And I keep, I keep saying my perspective, Ralph, because in my work with people, I, I, I never, ever teach or share anything from the perspective of you should agree with me, you should believe this, this is how it is. It's, it's, that's not my place. We're equally powerful. We're equally connected to source. Everybody already has everything. And it isn't my place to tell anyone what to think or believe. So as I share everything I share with my clients, I'm always reminding them to to take and pick and choose what resonates, what feels good. And, and anything I share that doesn't resonate, then just let it go. That's fine. So my truth is mine and everyone else has their own. And, and I am not in a position to ever tell anyone what their truth should be. It's, it's none of my business. Um, so again, I've used that intuition on through my, I went into the corporate world because my mind said that's the way you're supposed to live life and that's how you do it right and successfully. And, and that went very, very well. And, and in hindsight, I recognize how much I used my intuition. I wasn't so conscious and intention of it at the time, but it always played a role and things always turned out great. Um, I kind of got bored with it. I, I kind of went off on my own and started own, my own businesses. And, and all of that went pretty well, too. We got pretty heavily into real estate stuff. And my mind thought, because it was taught and told, you know, the more money I make, the more successful I am, the more worth and value it proves I have. <laughs> and so, <laughs> of course, I know that isn't the case, but that tends to be the belief. So that all went great. And, and there was a period where my mind thought, well, wow, I, we've got it made. This is, this is great. And then, of course, the universe stepped in and said, Scott, that's not why you're here. <laughs> so nothing wrong with any of that. But there's a lot more happening here, and that's not really your purpose. So, so of course, 2008-9 hit. Everything flipped over and went upside down, and we basically flushed it all and, and to start over. And the blessing in all of that was my mind let go and my heart took over and I was very strongly guided to really pursue how I could use my intuition to expand myself and, and to guide and coach and, and remind other people of who they are and what's possible. So you, you did and business so, and personal coaching and, and applying these lessons that you've learned. How do you apply this to a, a business. What and and what is energy? When you say energy, what exactly are you talking about and how do you apply it? How do you help people apply energy to their life and their business? Hmm. Well, I love the what is energy question. Um and I don't know that I have the answer to it, but <laughs> my my sense and my feeling is is that everything is energy. Everything in the universe is energy. There, there isn't anything, Ralph, that isn't energy. Everything is energy. We're energy. You know, the, the seat we're sitting in is energy. Every, everything is energy. And so at that energetic level, it, it, we're, when we focus there and we work there, we're kind of working at the fundamental or cause level of everything that is. And, and it's why it, from, from my perspective, again, it, it's so valuable and it's so powerful to approach things as energy because before anything comes into physical form, it's, it's energy and vibration, and, and then it takes form. And, and so that energy, my sense, that energy is who we are. That energy is everything. And there's one body or field of energy that makes up everything that is. So give us and an that, example uh, and because uh, it is kind of hard to – to define something that's kind of inv invisible and yet you you intuitively know it's there but uh, give us an example how does that how would energy work in a business uh in, in a positive way or in a negative way well in in the business environment um the the way i frequently approach that with with clients is to take a look at how and where our personal energy is sort of mixing in or even tangling with the energy of our business. So, so again, we're energy and, 
everything is energy. So when we create a business, that business is in, is is energy in the form of the business, meaning meaning that business has an identity, that business has a purpose, that business has an energy and a vibration of its own because it exists. And so we create this business and we have a tendency in our learned thinking patterns to to then associate that business with who we are and to sort of connect who our sense of who we are to the business. And so as we as we sort of cre- create this new entity, this business, we we are creating an entity that can and does sort of stand in and in and of itself in its own energy. So in other words, if we look at the energy of, a, of maybe some big established corporation, if you look at the energy and feel that, that energy, that presence, you, you'll notice that the energy of the corporation is not the energy of the individual people who own it or mm-hmm. run it. Yeah. So, so is this like a, like a collective so, consciousness or something like a corporate consciousness that's a separate thing from the individuals? Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great way to say it. And and in my experience, what I frequently find is a lot of business owners haven't made the distinction between the, their own personal energy and the energy and the purpose and the function of the business they've created. And so what I see often is that people are, are we'll say, working their business as an extension of their personal self. Mm-hmm. And, and so when that happens, what what is what is happening energetically they may not be conscious of is they're bringing all their personal you know stuff or baggage if you will into the energy and the operations and the functions of their business now will give us an so example it, of of how someone does that in a way that's not good so if if a person has a kind of a deep seated sense of of maybe not being worthy Hmm. And and I I point to that because that's a pretty common typical you know kind of inner feeling inner sense that that we all tend to carry in our society, and and so if we're carrying maybe a sense deep down inside that maybe we're not worthy, maybe we're lacking, maybe we're not lovable, maybe something's missing, and and if if we go into and and build our business and operate our business bringing that into the energy of the business as part of who we are, well, then that sort of limitation, or I'll, I'm going to say it's an illusion, it then becomes part of the energy of the business itself. And and that can and often does sort of limit or get in the way of the growth and the expansion of the business. Hmm. If I myself personally am not worthy of of expansion and abundance and comfort and flow and ease, and and I'm bringing that personal stuff into the energy of my business, well, then my business is sort of subject to those same misunderstandings and limitations. And then my mind wonders, well, why doesn't the business grow? Why isn't it taking off? Why, you know, why am I efforting and struggling when it seems like I've got a great idea and a great service and great abilities and, and gee, this business could do a lot of good. What, why isn't more happening? And, and often it, from my perspective, looking at it energetically, it, it's because there's a, there's a, I'll call it an entanglement between their personal energy and their personal sense of self worth value. And, and then the purpose and function and the energy of the business. So, so often what I do with clients is to take them through exercises to, to be really conscious and intentional about sort of backing out of their business their personal energies, sort of getting their personal stuff out of the energy of their business. So, so they are more sort of self-contained. Their energy is more sort of self-contained in and around them. And, and then the business energy is, is more self-contained in and around the business. And there's more of an acknowledgement that the business is a separate entity from their themselves personally. Well, th- this is so valuable, especially with, I think, with rebelpreneurs, which is usually solopreneurs, um, you know, self-employed people, consultants, coaches, where you you can't get lost at a big corporate, uh, big corporate energy 
because you are it. You you are the business. <laughs> so um, yeah, exactly, it, it's it's. I mean, man, that sounds hard. How do I go into my business like Michael Gerber saying you should work on your business, not in your business? But how do you do that? And how do you how do you separate the personal from the business when you're it? But what you're saying is you got to do that if you want to succeed. Well, from my perspective, yes. Yes, because otherwise we're unknowingly imposing those limitations on the business. Mm-hmm. So, um, fortunately, from my, again, from my perspective, who we truly are, the energy beings and awareness that we truly are, are, are pretty darn powerful and have tremendous influence over everything happening here. I, I would go so far as to say who we truly are at the energy level or the soul level is creating everything that's happening here. Mm-hmm. And, and so... Because we are that powerful, because it's all energy, and and energy responds to us. In other words, we influence energy all the time. Energy follows thought and intention. It's why we tend to get what we focus on. It's why we tend to get back what we put out. It, it's we're, We are a tremendous influence on the energy that makes up everything that is. So, so from that perspective, and given we really do have that, power and influence, we can literally focus on the energy of our business. And, and I'll give you a little quick example so mm-hmm. that so that the listeners have a, some information and a tool they can play with and work with. Um, I, I, what I'd like to do is sort of imagine like floating a bubble out in front of you and in that bubble, put the energy of your business and just intend that the energy of your business separate from your personal energy is, is that energy is in that bubble in front of you. We could put a bubble around you personally, your body and your personal energy field, so that they're delineated and, and sort of separate. And and then I take clients through an exercise of focusing in like focusing your intention, your awareness into that bubble with the energy of your business and, and to consciously and intentionally choose to pull any and all of your personal energy literally out of your business. And again, energy follows thought and intention. So no matter how simple it might seem to your mind, when you focus and you do that, you literally move the energy. Again, we're influencing moving energy 24-7. We can't turn that influence off. We might not be aware of it consciously, Hmm. but it's always happening. It's who we are. It's how we create everything. So, so it's either so working we, for us or it's working against us. And most yeah. most of the time, most of the time, it's working against us. Let's be honest. <laughs> Absolutely. And and again, just my perspective is is from our our learned human thinking and the the patterns and the programming. I call it that that our minds have been taught. It, it, we almost designed it to work against us because this is where we come to experience that contrast to who we really are. And, and that's a whole other subject, maybe another call someday. But <laughs> uh, we could have a lot of fun with that. But, but to stay on point here today, um, if focusing on imagining pulling your personal energy, all of your personal energy, out of your business energy. Because, again, your business has its own identity. It has its own energy and vibration. It has, it has its own purpose and function here. Hmm. And and to allow it to re- sort of relax and expand into being the entity and the energy that it is, so it's not limited by our personal limitations, our personal stuff, and then it, it's more in alignment with the growth and expansion that's that's possible for it to fulfill the purpose that it's been created to fulfill. Hmm. And and so as we imagine pulling our energy out of our business, often I'll I'll say bring that energy out and bring it through filters. And, and pull back, pull out your personal power. So as it comes out through the filters, what arrives, what's available to you then is just your pure personal energy and, and to sort of grab that and pull it back into your heart, pull it in through your heart center, back into your body and your field. And again, as simple or goofy as it might sound to your mind, energetically you're moving that energy and you're, you're starting to clean up that entanglement and set up your business and, and yourself to to function more efficiently and effectively. Mm-hmm. So very and, good. And, and I, I, I I could see right now that this is kind of hard to do on your own and without some guidance, right? <laughs> 
Well, probably, <laughs> but I, I'll, I won't say never because we're all incredibly powerful beings. Um, and, and I want to say, too, just real quick, that if, if anyone's listening to this driving, you know, don't try to envision and play with that right now. Wait, wait, t- wait till you're in a safe spot. So. Um, <laughs> That's some good advice. Now, now, tell us, tell us what it's like working with you. What are you going to do for someone that is really going to improve their chances for success and uh, and get past the the learning curve on trying to figure all this out on their own? Well, the way the way I like to to sort of phrase it and the way I feel about it is is what I ultimately what I'm doing is is guiding people into themselves, guiding people into their heart and soul and intuition, guiding people into that greater awareness that that's who they really are, and and supporting them in, in recognizing and understanding who they really, really are. Because as, as we begin to play human more and more in alignment with the incredible energy, love, and awareness that we truly are, it becomes a very different experience. And and very quickly, people realize that we're really not the victims of what's happening to us, the way our minds have been taught to interpret life, but but really, we are the energy and awareness creating everything in our experience. And And the wonderful news in that is that we have the power and the ability to actually create the business, the life, the relationships, the love, the abundance, the health that we all long for. And the only reason we're not living it is because we're living in the program pattern thinking that was literally designed to sort of keep that stuff away from us so we could play and experience the contrast to the love and the oneness and the connection that we all truly are outside of this physical experience. And and so the way I work with folks is um, is typically by phone or online. Um, I, I typically do two-hour sessions because it's my preference to to go, you know, as deep as that person is ready and ready to go, and to kind of get into and, and clear as much as as we can in in a reasonable amount of time. That, that's different because uh, most coaches or well, doctors only see you for about five minutes, but uh, <laughs> you know, most coaches or psychiatrists they want to talk to you for 45, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but you'll work with someone for two hours, up to two hours. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not a clock watcher, meaning, (laughs) meaning as best I can, I, I, it's not up to the clock to decide when we're complete because it's a clock and how would it know? (laughs) Right. I'm far more interested in, in going on the journey and creating the shifts and the changes and the releases and the expansion that that's going to empower people. Mm -hmm. And the way I work, the way I work, the way I work, because it's all about empowering people to tune and tap into and realize who's who they are and what's possible and what's available within them. So, so everything I do is in the intention of guiding folks to find it in themselves. Ne- never ever is it about giving their power to me or being dependent on me because that's not helping. That's that's more ego and and that's more mind level stuff and and that's. No, that just doesn't resonate for me. That does, that's not how I work. Sure, so, sure. So my, my sessions tend to run <laughs> for at least a couple of hours. But always I, I, tell, I tell my clients, we're complete whenever you feel complete. Hmm. And if that's an hour, hour and a half, that, that's fine because our minds have no clue what's best. Yeah. And when we, we get into this deep connection of energy and awareness and we start exploring those greater possibilities and perspectives, it, 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 it's amazing how time flies. And I'm yeah. sure you know from experience. Yeah, those and, hours and a, fly, like you said, you a know? clock doesn't know when you're done. How, how about a clock know? It's a clock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So rather than putting our power outside of ourselves, keeping that power home, keeping it within us and, and really creating from that, and when we do, this becomes a very different experience, very, very different than the way our minds have been taught to create it and interpret it and, and judge it and react to it. And nothing wrong with any of that. That's what our souls are here to do. 
but there's so much more possible when we're ready for it, when, mm-hmm. when we're in alignment with realizing it. And, and for those that are ready, this sort of thing is going to resonate. And for those who aren't ready, they're probably not even listening to us. <laughs> and, and so it's fine. It's perfect yeah. all the time. So, Scott, so, what are you working on right now that's got you really excited? Um, gosh, I'm really in a wonderful flow of, of doing my, my one-on-one coaching with folks. Um, I, I know there's other things coming in terms of, you know, programs and books and workshops and all that has come to me and through me and, and it, but right now, truly I'm, I'm really in the flow and alignment with, with being in what really is the love and the connection that, that happens when we're doing this deep inner work with, and, and nothing feeds my soul more right now than, than being in that love and that connection with, with uh, other, I'll say other people, but it's really just aspects of ourselves because beyond this human perspective, we're, we are the oneness and we, we are each other. And so just being able to spend my days, exploring and guiding and, and enlightening people, empowering people. And, and again, it, it truly, to be honest, Ralph, it, it's being able to be in that authentic, loving connection with fellow beings is what fuels my soul, what lights mm-hmm. me up. And it's why I do what I do. Excellent. And, and I feel so blessed and so grateful. Well, that, that's a really positive, uh, Outlook. I mean, you you definitely have the positive energy exuding, and I, I think our listeners will be able to uh, to pick up on that. And this has really been inspirational. But um, I'm curious if you have any final thoughts or words of wisdom, maybe a big idea or a quote that you'd like to share with us as we wrap things up. Um, well, what hits me to share in this moment is when we get outside of our our very much learned, limited human thinking and, and beliefs, there, there is a greater perspective that, that resonates for most people in, in, in realizing that at the soul level, at the energy level, we're here to experience everything that we're experiencing. Our souls know what they're doing. It's our poor, limited minds that are scared and confused and don't understand what's going on. And so at that soul level, we're fine now and forever. In other words, the energy and awareness that we are can never, ever be harmed or damaged. Our physicists have proven energy can't be created or destroyed. And clearly, whatever's powering these bodies, it's some form of energy. And we know these bodies don't last. They wear out. But the energy occupying them and powering them is literally forever. And we know that. We've proven that. And, and so the more we can feel and find and identify ourselves as that energy, the more fun it is to, to be in a body and play human, and the easier it is to create and attract and receive more and more and more of, of whatever lights us up, because it's all here for us. Energetically, nothing is separate. As we play human and physical, we're experiencing separate. It seems like I'm this body, you're that body, and we're separate. And physically, we have that perspective and experience. And now our souls understand separate. Well, once we understand separate and then go back into the oneness that we are, this experience of separate is now given us contrast. And it's given us a way to, to more appreciate and understand and, and experience the oneness that we are. Once we've experienced separate, Oneness has a greater meaning, and we have a greater understanding of it. So while we play in all the stuff here that seems so scary and painful and limited, every single bit of that is enhancing our understanding of the love and the oneness and the connection that we truly are, and we'll have that awareness forever. And so everything about this life experience is making us more even when our mind is believing what's happening is making us less. And all of that experience is constantly expanding the energy and awareness that we are. So at the soul level, everything happening here is making us more. That's why we're here. And at the mind level, it's scary. And that's valuable to learn and understand. And we'll have that contrast and understanding as part of our awareness forever because we were brave enough to hop into a body and come and play. (laughs) (laughs) 
I love that perspective. That's really that's really something uh, something interesting to think about. I've been speaking with Scott Capsule. He is an intuitive coach, a guide, and a mentor. He teaches and guides business owners how to get out of their own way by managing their personal and business energies. You can find out more and connect with Scott at scottcapsule.com. And I'll spell that for you. It's Scott, K-O-E-P-S-E-L-L, scottcapsule.com. Scott, it's been a real pleasure to have you on Rebelpreneur Radio. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Ralph. It's, it's been a pleasure and an honor to be here and, and play in the energy with you today. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.